my name is Leanna Marshall. Can you tell us a little bit about your, yourself and the program with Walking With Our Sisters, your role? and Sure. So my role is um, I sit on the National Collective with Walking With Our Sisters. So I help support the communities um, prepare for, um, for having the bundle. And so there's a lot of logistical things that I um, help. So, you know, making sure that um, they have the financial resources, making sure that they have um, the, you know, the, you know, the people that need to be a part of it um, and making sure that um, there's, there's so much protocol that's involved in it. And so ensuring that that protocol is being followed. And with Walking With Her Sisters, there's four like um, principles that um, we like to teach people. So it's, it's in order for the, the community to kind of, for it, like that, for that whole process to flow, um, you know, we're, we're, we're teaching them um, to practice those principles to kind of help with, with what they're doing. Um, when Walking With Her Sisters came here to Thunder Bay, um, it was myself and uh, Kara Ludet who were the co-leads, like the co-organizers. And so my role here at Thunder Bay was just to organize the community. Um, and yeah, that I, I still am processing that whole experience. <laughs> so I, that. Yeah, I still don't like to go to meetings. <laughs> um, so yeah, my role was just to kind of make sure everything was on track and that things were being done in the way that they needed to be done. Okay. So yeah. What what's the group, our age or target audience for the Walking with Our Sisters project? Everybody. So I guess like with Walking with Our Sisters, the I've never thought of it in a program sense because it's it's not a program. But I can see how it would be relevant for this interview <laughs> okay. in terms of the education and awareness mm-hmm. and community. Um, so with Walking with Our Sisters, it's serving, like primarily it's serving the families. Like we're creating a space for the families to come and for the community to help support them as they grieve and honor their, their loved ones. And so first and foremost, it's about them. Um, And then I suppose after that, because the community is creating that space for them, for the families, um, it becomes about the community. And so the community is everybody. So it's, it's not just indigenous people. It's not, you know, it's, it's everybody. It's an indigenous led commemoration. It's led by women. It's led by the grandmothers, like the grandmothers um, in the communities lead the whole thing. Um, and so I think that's what makes Walking With Our Sisters particularly unique, that there's no formal, there's no formal structure and hierarchy, um, which I think is really, really refreshing. And so we're relying on Um, the knowledge and experience and wisdom of the grandmothers, but then also the ceremonial people within the communities, which are sometimes women and sometimes men. And so we get to to learn from just these amazing people who know so much about um, about our ways, like our ceremonial ways. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's everybody. In a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. And I'm using the word program, but yeah. project, uh, it's yeah. art installation. Yeah. Um, and you, I think you just kind of spoke to this, but I'll ask again. But uh, so, what is the aim of the, the project? So, the aim is to, uh, the aim is to create that space for the families. Um, there's been so many people affected by um, Indigenous women getting murdered and who are missing. Um, And so Walking With Their Sisters came 
it came from a dream. So a lot of, like, it came, like, Christy Belcourt had a dream that what that became walking with her sisters. Um, it didn't come from her head. It came from somewhere else. And, and so in that vision, it really was about um, creating that space f for our people, by our people, um, not to do it in a political way, not to make it an issue, um, not to have an agenda. It, the only objective is to create a loving space for the families who choose to come to be a part of it. And what's beautiful about it is that how the community does that is it's so multifaceted. So you have like the actual vamps that got made by people across Canada and the States and Europe and like even Australia. Um, so there you have, you see, you have like this visual, you can, this visual representation of love, right? In the space. But then you have all the people's actions that contribute to it as well. Um, all the boring kind of behind the scenes stuff of like getting sponsorship money, you know, getting the fabric, like all of these kind of logistical things that, um, if you're part of ceremony are actually really, that's part of it. It's not the actual, like, you know, it's not, a, it's not like, I think I'm making this assumption that, um, like when there's ceremony, it's like you're waiting for the actual ceremony to happen. But for me, what I've learned in this whole process is that it's everything that comes before and all how we um, act and behave in those actions of doing like that day-to-day -day kind of logistical stuff, that also is a part of it. And that energy that we carry in those actions contribute to, um, to when we do the actual ceremony for the family. This is kind of weird. It, so it's ask, um, describing some of the different activities mm -hmm. that the program participates are involved oh, yeah. in. Well, this is the beautiful thing about this is that, like, with walking with our sisters, like because it's so like it's completely grassroots, um, and it has traveled like all across Canada. Like, I, I don't even know how many times. Um, the communities get to choose what how how that looks like so of course like when walking with their sisters like the actual like how it's laid out is always going to be the same but what makes it also unique is that the community can do all sorts of events to lead up to walking with their sisters they can do education workshops awareness building sharing circles and Honestly, like people have gotten so creative with um, what they've done. They've, they've, people have made quilts. Um, they've done bead ins. They've done bead and reads. They've had specific circles for um, people who identify as, as two spirited. Um, like you name it, people have done it. And so it's, it's, it's really quite amazing. And even in Thunder Bay, like, before and after like even now like we like we still do beatings and we, we beat like this the idea came from my sister Jean who um, like one of the guiding principles of walking with our sisters is when we do anything like anything to do with walking with our sisters whether we're talking about it um, participating in it whatever that looks like it's coming from a place of love it's coming from a place of kindness because we don't know who's been affected. And so we don't, we want to make sure that people get treated in a good way. And so my sister thought if we taught people how to bead hearts, so just like a melting cloth, that was the, that was one of the most popular workshops that we do is people bead like these little hearts and, um, and it's really simple, but it teaches people number one, like a skill we ne you know, my sister's always very practical is that people need to learn how to do stuff. So once you learn how to bead, like you can't unlearn that. And so, so there's that 
function, but then there's also like you're building a community and you're also creating a space to talk about issues related to it, to like um, the violence against Indigenous women in particular. So it's, and so we, we still do that after Walking With Our Sisters. It's been, I think, four years um, since Walking With Our Sisters came through our community, and you can still hear people talking about their experience with it. And those, and re- so much of our community got connected because of that event in our, in our city, which is really beautiful. Again, I feel weird asking some of these, but That's like, okay. so how do you measure the success of, of the, the project? We don't. We just don't. <laughs> we don't measure because it's not about it's not about um, it's not about success. It's um, yeah. I, I think in this context, when you think about that word, you can really impact the colonial um, expectations and the heaviness of what that word is. And so, when you think about Anishinaabe way of being, the indigenous way of being, um, it's not about that at all. Like, it's not even in the picture. <laughs> um, so yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't measure. We used to take numbers, like we used to um, tally the number of people that would come through. But I don't even know why we stopped that practice. I don't know when we stopped like okay. counting the people that went through because it was just like why are we doing this like walking with our sisters isn't funded by any granting source or funding source there's no government involvement and so it's like yeah it doesn't even none of that even matters so yeah we don't measure the success <laughs> I guess again I'll, I'll ask you what your perspective of indigenous education is maybe in terms of Mm -hmm. walking with our sisters I think walking with our sisters is like what it's taught me and my like my personal observations um, being a part of it is that it's um, for me what makes it so powerful is that like you hear these teachings about about our culture and being humble and kind and respectful and ceremony. But when you live in a city and you work in institutions and organizations and stuff, like we forget from sometimes day to day, like what that actually means. And I feel like with Walking With Our Sisters, it's actually for those people who don't participate in ceremony regularly, Walking with our sisters is ceremony, and they've provided, um, I don't want to call it a model, but I don't know what else to call it, but they've essentially have shown people uh, some fundamental values that carry our culture, and they've shown people how to connect how to honor, how to be in ceremony collectively in a really kind way. And I feel like um, the way that they've done that is that there's constant consultation with the older people and with the ceremonial people. There's constant communication with one another and every person has a role. Every single person has something to contribute, whether it's teeny tiny or tons. None of that even matters. None of that even gets judged or evaluated. It's just accepted that whatever you can contribute, you contribute. Um, and so when I see it move across, like I've, I think I've been to 10 or more communities with Walking With Her Sisters. And so you can really see 
consistently in every community that it's doing it's doing exactly what it needs to do it's bringing people together in a really loving way it's it's creating a physical space for people to come and to to grieve but it's also showing people that in that grief in our collective grief in our individual grief there's life and and people are able to come to a different understanding about what that means for them and it's you know and that's their own story um, in terms of how walking other sisters has like how, how how that's impacted people but it's that model of the grandmothers it's those values those four values can change the world and and it's changing the world the values of love treating people in a loving and kind way treating people in a gentle manner humility no hierarchy there's no hierarchy it's when you're in a circle everyone is considered to come with to have their gifts and there's no one that has um, any authority or power and I think there's that like when you kind of deconstruct it and decolonize it in your own head you can really understand like the power in that and how much that has impacted <laughs> indigenous people and how we are and in institutions right like we're so conditioned to think in this hierarchical way but when you look at it in, um, in a ceremonial way when you look at people as just people there's something really beautiful about that. It's beautiful that I can look at you as a woman and as a person, not as your history or the job that you represent or how much money you have in your bank account because none of that doesn't really doesn't that doesn't mean anything to me. But what it's meaningful is my connection with you as a person. And if we're all and so when you when you do that with walking with our sisters in that space you feel that you feel that um, you feel that connection with people and then the third um, principle is ceremony so everything is done in ceremony everything so there's constantly prayers happening tobacco being laid down offerings that are happening giveaways um, all this behind the scenes stuff from a spiritual perspective is happening to make sure that the people entering into that space are going to be okay. But also that the spirits and the women who have passed, that they're also okay and that they're going to be traveling in a good way. And that ceremonial piece is key to all of it. That's the foundation of everything. So you, that automatically is going to connect you to our land, it's all that automatically going to connect you to the water, to the sky, to everything, everything, to the medicines, everything. Mm -hmm. And then the last principle is, is volunteerism. Imagine that, working to do something just for the love of it, because you care, not because you're thinking what is the paycheck going to be, but working because you want to be able to support families and people who may not have the strength to do that and to ensure that that because as soon as you put money into the equation it changes the energy it changes the dynamic of everything and so right at the get-go it was like no no one's getting no one's getting paid we don't want this to be about money because this is actually about has nothing to do with money it has everything to do with with, with the women who've passed and who are, who are missing. And so when you take the money out of the equation, um, people come to the surface. That becomes the focal point. So those four principles, man, if we could all practice those every day, <laughs> we'd have a very different world. And so that's how I see, um, like, walking with our sisters. Like, that's in terms of um, education, in terms of 
how to educate people through an indigenous lens, Walking With Her Sisters has many, many teachings to offer. <laughs> in terms of all of what you're saying, and I guess in terms of Walking With Her Sisters, what do you see Indigenous education looking like over the next 10 years? I think in relation to Walking With Her Sisters, I see more people coming into spaces and coming together. And so the grassroots, the grassroots um, movements that are happening right now across uh, not just North America and Canada, but like I think globally, um, that's taking precedent because there's power in the people and I think more people are waking up to that, w- w- waking up, really. Um, and so I think in 10 years from now, like, what Walking With Her Sisters has provided is a way. This is possible. This is how you can do it. And this is how you can do it in a good way and do it well. Um, so I think in 10 years, like, there'll be more gatherings and commemorations and but I feel like it's even more than that like I feel like I don't know yet but I feel like there's going to be different things different ways of being together that doesn't include institutions necessarily that we're going to be gathering together um, in ways that are more uh, intentional uh, that are more um, about what's what's coming and how to be in a good way like as 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 people you know yeah I'm not sure like when I think of walking with her sisters I know when that when that closing ceremony is conducted I honestly feel like a whole nother layer of something is gonna reveal itself and something else is gonna happen and I'm not sure what that's going to be. And not I'm not talking about to me personally. Like I'm talking like, you know, nationally and globally. There's going to be something else that are that's going to be bringing people together.